enough. But what is impressive is what we're going to turn to now are how, how well these wines are preserved. And I think that the use of this is, is I mean, is, is infinite. Yeah. I mean, you already have it in, in, in a restaurant, right? Del Posto is a trial. Yeah, we're actually in a, we, we're not yet on the market. Um, we're going to launch sometime later on this year, most likely in the late summer. Um, but we've been trialing it in people's homes as well as uh, in a couple of different restaurants. For restaurants, it allows them to open up their wine cellars to buy the glass programs. So they can do wine pairings. They can do whatever they want with it. Uh, so we have uh, we've been working very closely with uh, Joe Bastianich, and we're in uh, one of his restaurants in New York, Del Posto. We're also in 11 Madison Park. Uh, then we're in a couple of restaurants out in uh, California, Aquarello, one of my favorite Italian places, uh, as well as a wine bar, the Press Club. Um, and a couple of other places uh, uh, in California. But our plan is to launch sometime toward the end of the summer and make it available for people to buy as well as for restaurants and wine stores. And yeah, I think one of the things that you, you informed me about in one of the applications that is invaluable is that now restaurants, uh, and this is happening uh, with uh, Joe up in New York, is that they can serve older wines by the glass and yeah. preserve them. Most of the preservation systems we have now, the wines, really it, they work for a couple days. Yeah. As you're going to see, we're going to go back to 2007, having been opened multiple, multiple times, glasses poured multiple, multiple times, and yet the wine is as fresh as can be. This is, that's why I say it's transformational. It's never been done before. And, yeah. and, and you, did, you did it because your wife was pregnant. Desperation. <laughs> How many years, though, did it take from the very beginning when you started conceptualizing this? this to, to get it to work? Yeah. So 1999, my son uh, was born. So it was between 1999 and 2003 until I had really the first functioning prototype. And uh, some of the initial tests were a little messy uh, when you didn't know what pressure to limit. Uh, can I smell this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this smelled like beef blood. That's that's enough. How's that smell? Uh, it's great. It's a great Chardonnay vineyard. Whew. But we we, got, we have to move on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Now, what we're going to do now uh, is that we're going to go back. Let's tell the history of this wine. When it was first opened. Sure. How many times? You, you probably don't know. Except you have well, yeah, I, I always write. And we're and we're going to taste this. We I tasted this in March. This is the 2003 Chapoutier Miel White Hermitage which I'm telling you, these wines oxidized, I mean, literally in hours. And yet, he opened this, and we had a, had a little taste of it in March of this year. Yeah. And this has been opened in 2008 for the first time, right? So. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, I always write on the bottle, February 16, 2008, uh, 17 gauge argon, which is what this system is based on, white port, 15 minute finish. <laughs> and then I, uh, I did it again in January 30th of 2010, and then uh, March 10th and 11th, 2013, Drank with Parker and friends, <laughs> and, and uh, so anyhow, let's 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 uh, let's try that. Sure. Make sure we put in the white wine glass. Yeah. Get this. <laughs> Actually, let's try it. Let's try the baccarat. Hear that gas? Yeah. That's yeah. the extra gas coming out. And this is this, this has a fill about to that up to that in the bottom of the bottle. This is Meow, which is the ripest, the, the most southerly exposed vineyard that Chaputi has, and it's a, more of a red wine vineyard than white wine. And in a vintage like 2003, you can imagine how there's virtually no acidity in this wine. Tell me when. Yeah, it's good. That's good. That's, now, this is the key. Yeah, I mean, I mean fresh fruit. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, awesome. Yeah, it's like, like apricot marmalade. Yeah. I mean, uh, what a great wine. This, this, I mean, this blows my mind. I mean, this is just, I don't think, this is why we got to do this live, you know, live on YouTube. Because <laughs> you just can't believe this. Hey, by the way, just to make sure, I'm not investing in this company. No, I, I mean, he has plenty of investors lined up. I wouldn't, it would be a conflict of interest, but I just want to share this incredible discovery with, with you know, the wine advocate uh, viewers. By the way, this is one of my favorite parts of this job. I get to meet people like this. <laughs> All right, let's do a red. Mm. You got it. Fresh. I mean, no, it's just like. Are we good? It's fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. No, that's like that's basically to me almost the perfect wine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's got a bit of oxidation. And remember, this was first opened in two thousand eight. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which right, one do you want to do? Let's do since we're getting. You know, let's do this one, which oxidizes overnight when I don't finish the bottle yep. with my wife. Yeah. Uh, and this was uh, this is two thousand seven. You first opened it. Yeah, right? yeah, and uh, and then again, yeah, uh, six nineteen oh seven, and then again uh, with 
with this funnel right here. Now, what do you think this is going to cost uh, consumers? When you so uh, we're actually working on the final devices now, and we're working on the final prices now. So uh, it's going to be in the two hundreds range. Okay. Um, uh, and the argon cylinders are going to be about ten bucks. And um, how many uses will you get? Get about that? twenty glasses of wine. So it's okay. about fifty cents per glass. Okay. Um, but think about this: you could take, like, if you have a nineteen ninety California Cabernets, and you want to have a, you want to taste two or three each night. You could, uh, or 1990 Bordeaux, or 1990 Burgundy, and you could actually use this device. And we obviously know here from the studies that you, even the most fragile of wines, which is the two we're doing here, uh, they're already at six, seven years of age with multiple openings, multiple pores, and yet they're still incredible. And this is the Pego, which is, uh, oh my God, it's, I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> this is just like fresh cork. Okay, yeah, we're we're gonna wind up here now. We're gonna be, so you're gonna sell this through the internet. What's your website? Uh, Coravin.com. So www.coravin.com. Uh, it's good. Yeah, it's real good. I have to spit it, even though it's early in the morning. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's an amazing, amazing device. I think, uh, and um, so if they need argon gas, obviously. In, Replacement needles. Uh, yeah, the replacement the needles last for a long time. The people who wear them out. Uh, you want to show us real quickly sure. how, the, how the canister comes off and then. Yeah, I'll do the do the whole thing. There may be a, this one may not be live. So a couple of quick things. Uh, argon cylinder goes in here. So there's a special Very argon simple. cylinder for us. You just drop it in, thread it on. Um, the device stands on its own, as you can see. Uh, to clean it, which I do once a night, I pour water through here and it drains out the needle. You give it a little spritz of gas, and you're all set. One question. What about uh, wines with a lot of sediment? If you were going to do something like a 61 Bordeaux. So what I would do, and um, we actually developed this technique with the guys in some of our restaurants. Uh, whenever you've got sediment, you want to make sure you don't disturb the bottle a whole lot. Uh, so what I do with a, a high sediment bottle is I leave it on its side if, it, if I've been storing mm -hmm. it on its side. I actually prefer, cork really likes uh, uh, to be wet. So I store all of my bottles like this, and I'll actually put it on right in the rack. I'll push the needle through. I'll pour the wine, I'll tip it slightly up to vent the gas and take it out, right. and barely disturb the bottle. You really don't want to be standing it up, tipping it over, right. or else you'll get sediment. Sediment doesn't block the uh, device, but it will come out into your glass. Coravin.com, they're probably going to launch this sometime from the end of July to the end of the year. I wanted to get this out there. We'll probably, uh, uh, and I, I'm telling you, it's going to revolutionize drinking older wines and just have, being able to preserve multiple wines in your cellar and have the choice of... As many as you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as long as you're willing to pay for the gas canisters and, and, and do it. So uh, there's, there's never a wine that's too good not to drink. Hey, Greg. Sir. Thanks, thanks a million, man. I really and appreciate I mean, it. It is amazing, and uh, I think uh, we, you're going to change the wine world. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thank bye you bye. very much.